There's a drop of rain in Wales today, if ever there was one. Hi guys, we're back in the world's rustiest shed. Now, I thought about doing a part three of the bowl thing. It's not going to be a bowl anymore that I did yesterday, the one that I uh, very cleverly popped the bottom out of. I have got plans for it, but I haven't really thought them through, so I don't want to just charge off her head into the, the distance stampeding. But there has been some happenings going on in the shed. So uh, this is basically my chuck. Let's just turn the camera around and get on with that. So yesterday when I'd finished I came to try and get the chuck off and I just couldn't. It was stuck like chuck. That is the only thing I can say. I eventually managed to get the chuck off but not the insert. There's an insert inside it which I had to undo and I used my boa constrictor strap wrench there which I got from Axminster Power Tool so you can pull it down very tight but this would not get it off when it was joined to the insert. And so I also used this to grip the insert and I did some turning and it actually came off and that wasn't a problem but the insert is still stuck on like I don't know what so you very carefully take the chuck off you have to be ever so careful with the thread in an insert it's not really meant to come on and off all the time it needs to be preserved carefully but there we are I think we got away with that now then let's get some spanners going and see what I can do with this and I've put the bin bag back over the back of the lathe because it is actually raining in here at the moment it keeps dripping down from there okay so the pipe wrench is set to that one and there's also a flat well, a pair of flats either side of this main spindle thing here. Well, it's the main spindle. What am I saying, the main spindle thing? It is the main spindle. But trying to uh, pull these, it's just not doing it. No, that is absolutely stuck like Chuck, if ever anything was. Right, I have to have a think now. So now I've got the tool rest involved. Just move the tool rest in underneath there to hold the bottom of this spanner, stop that turning anymore. It's still not... I'm still not wanting to budge there. It feels a little bit of movement, but yeah, it just springs back then. I'm going to try and find a little mallet or something that hammers, but not very hard, uh, just to try and shock it off. I think it comes down to two candidates, really. The white rubber mallet here. I don't know whether it's food grade or not, but it's certainly white. Or the hammer, which I'll have to use with a little bit of wood so as not to shock it too much. But first of all, let's just check this is on. That's pretty good. Now let's see. Now it's moving that spanner away. It's bare against that then. Oh, was that it? No, <laughs> the spanner slipped out. Okay, better try it this way round then. That looks a bit more likely to stay on. I hope. Let's get the pipe wrench on there not, not budging not budging at all right bit of penetrating oil in there I don't want to use the big hammer on that there you go if all else fails find a rusty old can of this we've all got one in the workshop somewhere it's the right colour to be the thing I need. This one is Aquanol Multi-Purpose Spray. There's lots of them. Uh, apparently you can clean up nuts and bolts with them. I think that's quite impressive. So uh, let's put some of that in here. Around the, the back of the thread there. Right into the flange as well. Because I want this to penetrate. I'll put some up the middle flood all around that and that's going to need to be left for a little while and it's finally come loose I'm afraid the blowtorch got involved guys I did not want to do that but it's a good old engineer's trick if all else fails you just heat the whole assembly up and they come apart a lot easier so this is still pretty hot now but it's come off and the great news is my thread does not seem to be damaged I'm going to check that quite carefully now Oh, that looks as right as rain. Once a good clean out, that chuck had just bound itself on much too tightly. 
You know what? I think I might have assembled it wrong. I've got no idea. And let's face it, things don't go all that well when you've got absolutely no idea what you're doing. So time for a think. So now that's sorted out. That does need a good going over with a little wire brush. But that is in the house and it's chucking it down. Oh, I don't fancy running back and forth. So I'm going to put the thread protector on fairly loose for now. And stick the Morse taper back in there. In fact, we'll put a little bit of, little bit of spray on these things, actually. There we go. And on here as well. The more the merrier, really. I'll say it again. This is not oil. I keep saying that whenever I use it. It is, actually. It's very, very thin oil. But it drops off fairly quickly. So, yeah, you've oiled it. I've oiled it. But not for long. Not for long at all. Which is why it's okay to oil the shank. Have the Morse tape a bit with it because that would slide if it sort of ends up with oil on it. But I can pull it out next time I want to use the taper, wipe it off, and that'll be fine because it's such thin oil. But in the meantime, it is protecting it. I'm now going to protect it some more because it's raining like Billy Ho. I wasn't actually going to come out here today, but I was desperate to see what was going to happen uh, with that chuck. So I've been worried about it, you know, it was going to rust out here basically if I just left it. So, so glad to get it in last night. Now, we'll just do this up. And this should just pull right over the whole thing. There we go. Because it's not very cold country, this, you know, compared to some. We've just had a really cold two or three weeks. And during that time, it seemed like the end of the world because it was so frozen up, you know? Because we're not actually geared up for it in this country. Um, it actually it hit about minus three, I think. That was all it was. But there was a massive wind chill factor because of the, the beast from the east, we've been calling it, uh, blew in and it felt like it was minus 12. Well, we're just kind of not used to that here. I know uh, people have it much worse than that. You know, we're quite lucky if that's all we got, really. Uh, but I was taken aback. We were all a bit taken aback. And not much got done, but I have been out here. I have been doing bits. And it's always good to have something to get on with, basically. And I think i better get this insert out of harm's way by putting it back in. So, we've got the same wrench we've just used. I've mounted it in the vise. This is what Nova tell you to do in their instructions. And tighten this in all the way home. Feeling all the while in case there's any obstructions because that might mean I'm cross-threading it. I'm going very gently because we've got a lot of leverage on it here now. It's a 230mm Draper wrench. Still going in though. Tightening now. Don't want to overdo it, but I really don't want to underdo it. And I think that's going to be right. Now they say ah, there should be no gap between the insert, the top of the insert, and the inside of the chuck. And I can only really feel that with my finger. Seems right though. Seems to be snug right up against there. There is a small gap here, but no, that's absolutely bedded in. Well, I'm sure of that. So that's good. I shall get on and put the grub screw in and then it will be its beautiful old self again. Okay, guys, thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow doing more random stuff in the shed, almost certainly involving this unfortunate bowl, which I popped a hole in yesterday. So I look forward to seeing you then. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great time. Bye-bye.